Jeff, thank you. Well, the war in Ukraine continues to escalate as more civilians come under attack. Nearly 35 people died, another 130 injured in an attack Sunday, and the Russians are ramping up activity near the capital city. 69 News reporter Ali Reid joins us in the studio this morning with those details. Ali, good morning. Good morning, Karen and Eve. That attack you just mentioned happened near the border of Poland, a member of NATO. We're talking less than 15 miles away. Officials are swearing to protect the country and refugees. Russian forces continue to expand their invasion across Ukraine. A number of key cities are in play as an airstrike hit a large military base Sunday just miles from the border of Poland. This is very provocative to be this close to Poland, but Poland is a NATO ally and we have sworn to protect Poland. We've seen a number of U.S. bipartisan groups hit the grounds in Poland. Their goal is to be seen as a united front as they listen to refugees and their needs. They want the ability to have better control over the, over the skies in order to give them a fighting chance. Russian forces are striking down harder on the capital of Ukraine once again. They're using airstrikes to damage the north and south of the city. Kyiv's mayor continues to fight to save his city. We never give up and that's why, that why we continue this uh, war. But um, the key which can stop this war is the unity of all world. We have to make it pressure, political pressure, sanction pressure, and please weapon delivering, delivering to, to, to Ukraine. We're ready to fight, not just for our city, not just for our country. In the meantime, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky still hopes to negotiate with Russia and is waiting for a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. His requests continue to go unanswered by the Kremlin. Zelensky says his delegation has a clear task to do everything to ensure a meeting happens between the two. He says talks between the two countries happen daily to establish a ceasefire and more humanitarian corridors, a process that saved more than 130,000 people in the last six days. Karen?